Yeah, I started driving a truck in 1957, I think it was, 56, 57 at, uh, at NBC, and then just moved over to Metro, about, I think I moved to Metro in 1958, yeah. And then just worked my way up. I was an apprentice, I was an assistant. Uh, I worked with great editors. I would work with the greatest editor of all, which is uh, a guy named uh, Ralph Winters. Ralph Winters, in my opinion, is the f won not how many Academy Awards. And of course, Ben Hur was what he was doing when I met him. It, it, what happens? It gets you whenever you do things like that. And you get a little humor and stuff. It puts an audience in a false sense of security. And then when when you hit them, it just it's that much more powerful. I mean, as bad as it looked, that's how bad I'm trying to make it feel. And by using pace and by making things too long sometimes, uh, if I'd have milked that any longer, it might have not had the same effect because then you, just, you lose the effect. But when you get just to that time to, to let her release, people just were shocked. Um, but uh, it's usually um, the pace. It's mostly pacing. And wanting to really see, always you want to see in those situations an actor or actress's eyes because really acting properly. I mean, the eyes really tell you a lot. You have to go with your own instincts. You have to do it the way you think was the right way to do it. Do because it? if you don't, and you're trying to do something else, you'll, you can't, you just can't, it won't work. I mean, I was taught that by, by Ralphie. That was my, probably my biggest... Um, when I first started cutting, and they give me scenes at MGM, these editors different. And I try to be doing it like I thought they want me to do it. You, you become, you, it doesn't work. And most of the other editors, that uh, the only way you can ever be worth your salt is, um, is being able to do what you think is right, and being able to put something up there that's good. I've never. Uh, but I don't think you know how much. I mean, I never, all I do is when I get, it, I just, just do whatever I feel is should be there. No, no. Most everybody I ever worked for wanted me to do that. Dick Donner wants me to do it. Mister Fleischer wanted me to do it. All the directors I ever worked for as an assistant, or even started, Robert Aldridge wanted me to do it that way. When I start, you know, start doing film, film, they want you to give them a film. That's what you. you that's you're not worth anything if you, you know. But if you really believe in something, it's an editor's, I was always taught it was an editor's responsibility to to give a film good pace and and good performances and and try to keep the performances even. That's that's very difficult sometimes. I try to put down on, I try to make the film be what they envisioned, whether they shot 25 million feet, whatever it is, whatever, you, whatever the feeling was I got from the script or whatever the, the feeling the director said he was trying to get is what I try to make the film, you know, show. Dramatic scenes are ten times harder than action scenes. When you're going through a dramatic scene, you have to make sure it's believable, and you also can't let the audience, you know, make it feel that. Like I said again, it's pace, but pace doesn't even doesn't mean fast. Always pace means whatever the pace of that scene should be, to make it work, to make people get edgy maybe or. They take more work. It isn't a matter of the you see a line, you cut, you see a line, you cut. It's a matter of watching a person's reaction. Sometimes you watch a, a movie or a TV show or something, and they, as a, they say a line and they cut. They say a line and they cut. The actor didn't have a chance to think about what his answer would be. You know. <laughs> but in, this, in, in, a, in a dramatic scene uh, like this, when he's they're talking, you got to give them time to react and, and you got to make them look believable and this, this, she did a very good job right there. And, and you know, and his, maybe his readings or to make it work, to make any dramatic scene work, you got to make sure that the, I always say force, they don't feel like it's force, you got to feel like it's really, it's, it's a home video that you're looking at of real stuff, that's, that's how you got to make it. That's what I always look at. The minute I see something is too forced or milk, too many close-ups, then I'm out of it. Action scenes, as long as you have things that look believable, they, you can, you, as far as matching and the pacing and stuff, it's, it's just a matter of, it's not a 
what happens is an audience doesn't have as long to focus on on the editing and the face when you have action because the things are happening so fast if it's a punch and a hit and a fall. It just, it just happens. Usually I, I, go, so I go down there when, when uh, normally I don't because I don't want to see what they're doing. I want to see it fresh. And, and it's good in one way and it's not good in another, which is um, every time they see me coming, they think something's wrong. So, oh, oh, if they see me coming, there's a problem. Because I don't usually spend much time down there. I don't have enough enough um, enough problems in the in the editing room I've had a um, Randy I'll tell you this I've had a uh, I have like rules for editing some things I the director can come in anytime of course that's this film but I don't I want the actors in because they they know I know for they all they, the thing they're doing they're looking at themselves they're not looking at the over not very many actors can divorce themselves from that so I don't allow actors in the cutting room there was, I don't think there's ever been schedules like they have now in the last three or four years. It's nuts. Because they have release dates, they have these slots they want this film to go into, and somebody says we can do it. What do we do now? And they try it. I don't want to tell, I don't care how much film they shoot as long as the schedule allows me to be able to see it. If I can't look at it, then I just have to go through and do it. Oh, Rennie, Rennie, shoots a lot of coverage where it gives me a lot of options. It also helps us on the, on the back side because it gives us ways of shortening up scenes and stuff. A lot of directors, Richard Fleiss used to shoot scenes but he wouldn't shoot any coverage so I couldn't cut it he, because it's something he wouldn't want to cut. That is, they should, people usually now are, are, are smarter. They, they can, they know if a director's trying to do that. They just, you gotta have coverage. To Billy Wilder, the film with Billy Wilder, same way. Um, front page. I was actually, I, I didn't think it a credit because Ralph Winters was the editor. And I was like, and I was going to do Midway. And right after that, so I was at Universal, and we used to get 500 feet of dailies a day. We were finished with the cut. Two days after we finished rapping, we finished shooting, we're done. Um, he's exactly the same. Everything was, every sh move was planned, every cut was planned. It's a, a good side of it, it's, it's easy, and the bad side is that it's, uh, if something's wrong, you have, no, you have no recourse to fix it. I always say, I see the dailies first. If something's really wrong, I immediately go to the set and say, I think we have a problem. Uh, we better do this over, or we, or, uh, but normally, Randy's got enough stuff on it where we don't. I, I might ask for something. I mean, I might ask for a, some, an extra shot or something. But uh, there have been scenes that something has happened where we have to reshoot for some reason, whether the performance or something wasn't right, uh, somebody missed or whatever. But or a transitional shot. I've asked. I've asked directors to get me a shot to go from a scene to another scene. Yeah. That's my job. I mean, that's part of that's part of what I'm supposed to be doing. I use my usually I put in temp music because people are pretty tough for them not to to watch this with uh, like the old days with just the work track and a, the music kind of gives them a better feeling of what it's going to be like. And so if I know the composer is going to be on the, on the film, if I know who it is, like on Lethal's, it's Michael came in, or I'll use music that they've done. And, uh, or if on, uh, like on Basic, I knew it was Jerry Goldsmith, I used his music. If stuff that would fit. But if I can't find something, then I, I just use what is best. And then they, sometimes it's good, it's because it, sometimes people get, they fall in love with the temp and it's tough. Composers hate it. Composers hate that we put music in. But some films are very, very difficult to do because of, uh, there's so many mood changes in, in, a, in, a, in a scene, um, and they have to write it for that. Jerry's been very complimentary and tell me that my music background really has helped my rhythm and my pacing. Because I, 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 you know, originally what I, my first love was, was music, and I wanted to, I thought, you know, someday be a composer when I was 19 or 20, whenever it was, and, but I got, in the film, and and I really I really enjoyed it.
it's not so much the writing the music, but it's a rhythm that you get. It's a rhythm for a scene or a tempo for a scene or when you're doing this kind of stuff that I, I can't explain why or how. It just, it's just that's something you, you, you have to be born with. You talk to the, usually the visual effect guy and say, ask them what they envision, and then you try to, and you guys get together and you, you put it together that way. I always try to pad it just a little bit. It's just something I've always done. It makes it a lot easier. A lot of times we get what they call, um, you know, it's a sketch of, of what's going to happen. And it's the, it's the, it, that gives me length and everything. Then, then, then it's different than it's right to the length. Animatics. My biggest problem with when I do there were so many beautiful shots in this movie that I was sometimes put too many of them in, and then of course it gets saturated, and then they don't they're not as effective. Usually I get a a one line a, a, a one line um, synopsis of what the fight's supposed to happen, what's supposed to happen in it. Usually a lot of the pieces like that shot there and that are done with multiple cameras, so. It makes it, you know, if you want to get close or wide or this is Sly taking the beating. This is, I always thought about, I always thought about when he took the big beating, like the Rocky thing, and then all of a sudden he, he's got that extra strength. There's probably two or three takes on each one of these incidents with, you know, with multiple cameras. When they shoot multiple cameras, I, I, I mean, it's easier if it's in a, if it's a really good, uh, if it's a really good uh, performance, it's, it makes my life easy because uh, I can use all the angles of, of that same performance. Most of the time, you'll find that you like something better in the wider angle than in, on take one, and in take three, it was better in the other angle for whatever reason. And it doesn't usually work out that way, but a fight scene, it's good because then you have the same tempo and stuff like that. When I kind of move you together, I, I make sure that the scene, I don't just like assemble, I really make a cut, a good, it helps the, it helps the director, it helps everybody.